Welcome to Coffee with the GM Christopher Mitchell. Hosted by Anita Lawrence with special guest Ernan Rojas. Hello, I'm Anita Lawrence, your Good Day Sun Lakes host, and I'm being joined this morning with, by Chris Mitchell, the Sun Lakes General Manager, who is here to answer questions that have been submitted by residents and to discuss some topics of interest to the community. Good morning, Chris. How good, are you? Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great. It's a beautiful morning. It is. We've got the fire going, but luckily we have been moved a little bit away, so we're not melting. Yeah, we're not feeling the heat. That's right. That's right. So, we've sprung forward. Yes. A few more hours of daylight in the evening. Or if you take the other side of the coin, we lost an hour of sleep, but that's... It takes me a while to adjust. Agreed. Agreed. And spring is officially here it is it is and there's so much going on in the community there is and i bet our honeydew lists have also grown because of that extra time there's a lot of things we have to do around the house cleaning and everything so yeah you have more time in the evening for those i do know that okay well let's get into the questions Indeed. and topics for today perfect okay a member has asked who is responsible for falling palm debris on sun lakes boulevard and does Sun Lakes assume responsibility? So that's a tricky question. The, the assume responsibility, that's a legal term. I get a little afraid of about that, but let me back up a minute. Uh, artistic maintenance uh, does maintain the median. So Sun Lakes HOA has an agreement with the city of Banning because the medians there on Sun Lakes Boulevard are the city of Banning's property. That is their, their responsibility. But an agreement was done many years ago that allowed Sun Lakes to maintain that, uh, make sure that there was grass, uh, that the trees were trimmed. And so the responsibility for maintaining it falls on the association. Now, when there is high wind issues, and we've had those, you and I both know that, mm -hmm. uh, Artistic will get out there to start cleaning up the palm fronds that have fallen. They're do at the same time, they're trying to do that inside the community as well. So if it happens on a weekend, that crew that's going around, they will work their way to it, but you won't see an immediate, oh, it's, it was on the ground, now it's gone, because that crew is working throughout the community and the roadways to remove those. Okay, yes. There was a lot of debris out there Saturday yes. evening. Yes. So. And if there are members that are concerned, please call the operations department, either Mark Schleiden or Antoinette, and they can assist you with putting in the report and addressing that. Okay. There have been some member questions about what is the email address yes. that residents should send questions to? So members, please send questions related to the Good Day Sun Lakes Coffee with the GM, please send those to slccquestions at gmail.com. That email address was set up so that Anita and I could get questions uh, to bring back to this. We also have team members because there are members that are using that as a platform to send concerns or reporting issues to the community. That is fine. Uh, what that will do is that email will be routed to the department for follow-up. Uh, but the key point we want for, for input for this uh, uh, update, Coffee with the GM, please send it again to slccquestions at gmail.com. Great. And then we'll address them. And we'll probably put something online and I'll work with Good Day Sun Lakes to put a little flyer together, something on the crawl maybe. Okay. What are some of the upcoming projects for the association? So right now, there has been a slowdown in the projects that we're doing because of supply chain issues, uh, vendors having an inability to, to, to provide enough staff. They can't do that many jobs. And so what we're working on right now is the bunker project on the championship course. And you can go online to the Sun Lakes website under current projects and you'll get an update of what's happening with the uh, bunker project. So right now that is ongoing. Um, that should finish, uh, the timeline I think is still four weeks out, but again, go to the timeline for the most accurate uh, milestones and time, the timetable for that project. Then we're also gonna be working on 
Um, the RV lot um, resurfacing, that's going to be done. That's a May-June timeline when it's warmer. Then the RVs are going to have to be removed from the RV lot. They'll be allowed to park uh, on the street. There'll be a special pass for that. Um, and that information will be coming from the operations department and to the RV committee. Um, so those are the big pro projects that are going on. Gate one and gate two have also been the fountains. That has been an item for the last four years, keeps getting deferred. Um, uh, we acquire quotes, the board asks us to acquire quotes. We're gonna start moving forward with it and then we don't move forward with it. Uh, so I have to commend the board, our sitting board, uh, you know, uh, board president, uh, Marsha Midget has said, hey, we need to just put this out to a town hall. Let's get the feedback because the past boards have started the process. Vendors start answering, turning in their, their paperwork to bid on the project, and then we don't do the project. What's happening also, members then don't know what's going on. Vendors are getting upset because they take the time to do proposals and then we don't do the project. And then we go back and say, can you get some more proposals? After a while, they start to say, you're really not gonna do the job, why are you wasting my time? And so I like the way Marsha and the board are looking at saying, you know what we need to do? Just put the, do some town halls, do that in uh, end of May, June, get feedback, update the community of what the ideas for the project are, the benefits, the costs, and then decide if they're gonna move forward or not. And that's kind of the approach we followed with the drought tolerant is trying to get information out. This is what's gonna be on the ballot. Here's why it's important. Uh, so after that, after we do the town halls, not sure what other projects are gonna come up. Again, because we're kind of slowing down, trying to get through this uh, inflationary period. Uh, high costs of uh, products, mm -hmm. uh, labor shortages, and so we just, we need to work our way through that. Okay. Well, we have some exciting news. We have a new executive chef. We do. Chef Chris is come up, has come aboard. He started on the 16th of March, Wednesday. Uh, he comes from, now I forgot the, what? Was it Canyon? Canyon Crest? Canyon Crest. Yes, thank you. See, you know, you're the reporter. You know what's going on. I, I'm just, I'm just here to uh, to give some updates. But uh, Chef Chris uh, has come very talented. To, um, has come to Sun Lakes. We're very excited because the presentation during the interview process, and we do do a tasting uh, with the executive chefs that are applying. Uh, the process, just so that you know, is first service. As a reminder, first service is the employer. First Service does the hiring. So First Service interviews several candidates. We have a recruiter that goes out uh, into the local areas, also all the way to uh, Los Angeles, down to San Diego to recruit staff. And then we uh, have applicants come in, we interview them, go over some questions, and then the top candidates, either the top three, top four, will be invited to do a uh, tasting. And what we do is we say you have an hour and a half, provide three dishes of what you feel are the best presentation with the product that we have. So they don't know what product we have because they haven't been here. So it's a challenge to see how quick they can adapt, how they can utilize the tools and the inventory we have to present something that is, uh, presents very well, tastes great, and also if they can cost it out because in this environment where costs are going up, it seems like daily you go buy eggs at the store one day, you know, it's up, it's up uh, 20 cents. Gas, same way. Yes. And so th this is a great opportunity to see in a little stressful environment because you only have an hour and a half to create these, uh, Chef Chris really blazed through it, did very well. Actually said I, to uh, uh, Thomas and said, I, I'm not gonna eat an hour and a half. I got this, this, and produced great plates, presented well, edible flowers are yes. on the, that was one of Chef Chris's ideas of, uh, he had said, hey, I want to improve on the presentation. Very similar to Chef Noe. Chef Noe was all about presentation. Uh, it must be appealing to your eyes, mm -hmm. and then your, your mouth and stomach, et cetera. So uh, Chef Chris did very well. 
so we're very excited and we will look to do some kind of outreach uh, in the future so the community can see uh, Chef Chris and I believe we're going to probably have a board member giving an update and talking about that. So that's very exciting. Uh, we're still moving forward with some hiring. We still have some line cook shortages, uh, some a bartender. Uh, we need to hire another one because the goal is, and this is breaking news, is what we're trying to open the sand wedge. And now, unfortunately, because it's taken a while to recruit a new executive chef, we're looking at April, mid-April, hopefully, to, bring, to open the sand wedge three days. The idea would be open Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to start mm -hmm. for breakfast and then get you know uh, the, the process is going, make sure the product is great, the service is great, and then we would expand it. So that is coming in April and I believe Chef Chris uh, was a key piece to that with that happening. So very excited about that. Well, I'm very happy that we have an executive chef on board. Right. We got to meet him on Sunday when we had breakfast, nice. and I must say, I was really impressed when nice. our plates came out with that beautiful orchid on it. Right. Yeah. So, that Chef Chris is a key person to hire. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know if you knew, we also have another key hire within the administration department, and that is Hernan Rojas. Yes. He is the uh, communication AV tech communication specialist. We keep putting more titles in his name because he, he has, he's capable of doing a lot of stuff for us. And this is something that goes back to Frank Danucci. Uh, Marsha Midget had talked about the need for an on-site staff person who could help uh, with good, help Good Day Sun Lakes. Because remember, you and the rest of the Good, good Day Sun Lakes team are volunteers, you donate a lot of hours to this but you also like to go on vacation yes and take time and so Frank Danucci way back then saw the need to say I need a staff person here who can be that that point of contact to work with Good Day Sun Lakes to work with the staff improve communication inc improve our, our videos our, our flyers etc so Hernan is here very excited uh, to have him on board and I think you're going to be probably talking to him soon aren't yes, you? Yes, I'm going to be talking with him in just a few minutes. Awesome, awesome. But before we do that, is there anything else you'd like to cover before we wrap up this segment this morning? You know, uh, just a couple of things I want to talk about is I, I'm hoping the community has enjoyed some of the videos that we put out on Good Days and Lakes. The financial, uh, financial corner I think will be an important piece. If you've watched it, I hope you've uh, enjoyed it. For those that haven't, just take a little bit of time to watch it because the key of these financial corners are to give you the information where to find the facts. Because right now in this world of social media, misinformation, we need to, we need to cut through that noise and find where can I get the answer and then judge for yourself. And so that will be the purpose of the financial corner. Our next one is, is talking about uh, the relationship with Sun Lakes, a management company, employees versus contractors, etc. So that will be coming up very shortly, probably we'll film that the same time we do the administration update. Also we are working with uh, um, a, a member and the board, Linda Spaulding, uh, Ida Wenzel, Linda Spaulding, our board treasurer, Ida Wenzel, who is the assistant treasurer, Dom Day is a, a member who has uh, They've been working together to say, is there a way to produce these financial numbers in a visual way? And that's using graphs. And so uh, Mr. Day has worked with Linda and Ida uh, on some options uh, that will be talked about at the open session. And then we're looking again, how can we better provide or an easier way to provide the information to the members? Because um, some go by numbers, so many people are visual and like to see graphs. And so we are going to be working on that. So look forward to seeing that. And then again, I just want to say thank you and the Good Day Sun Lakes team for your hard work and everything. Oh, you're welcome. Well, we'll be seeing you again in April. Yes, you will. And until then, have a, have a great rest of your March. Excellent. You too. Take care. Thanks.
right. Hernan Rojas is here, and he's our new audio, visual, and communication specialist for Sun Lakes and Good Day Sun Lakes and Channel 97. Welcome, Hernan. Thank you. Very uh, happy to be here. Well, great. I've been already seeing some of the posts that you've been putting out, and uh, so I know you're already out and about within the community. Yes, I am. I'm out there with my buddy Bob Murray, who's been helping me a lot. I want to say thank you to him, because without him, I wouldn't, we wouldn't be out there. He's well, showing me the ropes. He's an excellent mentor. Yes, he is. Can you tell the viewers a little about your professional background? Uh, yes, I am a U.S. Army veteran. Um, while I was there, I was in the infantry. And starting off, they gave me the big radio, so I had to carry that with me for every mission. And that's kind of where I started my uh, photography and film, because I would always bring the camera and the radio with me, kind of uh, documenting the whole uh, deployment. Um, from there, when I got out, I went to the LA Film School, graduated, graduated from there. Then I ended up working with the County of San Bernardino I was there for nine years doing surveillance with the security department, monitoring their whole camera system. And now I landed here in Sun Lakes, beautiful Sun Lakes, I should say. And I'm very happy and blessed to be here. Well, thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sure that you're going to, with all of your background, you're going to be an added uh, asset to our community. What will you be responsible for in the Sun Lakes communications? Uh, I will pretty much be responsible for uh, uploading to Channel 97, uh, managing the website, and just providing good content for you guys to keep you updated and informed with everything that's going on in Sun Lakes. Okay. Is there anything else you would like to add? I'm very happy to be here. I'm very excited. If you see me, uh, come say hi to come say hi to me, and you know we can make some contact together to. Uh, make everybody's day. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's been my pleasure to introduce you to the community. No problem. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us today. And if you have questions that you would like our general manager to answer, please email them to slccquestions at gmail.com. Once again, thank you for watching. I'm Anita Lawrence for Good Day Sun Lakes and Coffee with the GM.